Hello, hope you're doing well. In this video, we will deal with an optimization. Specifically, we will talk about the largest rectangle that can be inscribed in between two parabola. This problem can be found in one of the Mathematica notebooks that I have provided on our Moodle site. So let me get into the problem. So specifically, the problem that I want to talk about is right here. I want to find the dimensions of the rectangle with the largest area that has two vertices on the curve, y equals 8 minus x squared, and two vertices on the curve, y equals x squared minus 10. So how do we start this? So I suggest you think about these two parabolas first. One is opening up, and the other one is opening down. So I'm going to draw a rough sketch and then label a lot of points on here so we can get the idea of how to compute an area based off these parabolas. So I have done a lot of work ahead of time, and don't get scared. There's a lot here, but let's go through it together. The first thing I know is I have a parabola that faces up and a parabola that faces down. So they're going to naturally create this, let's call it a football shape. If I put a vertice here and drop a vertical line, then a horizontal, then a vertical, then a horizontal, I wind up getting a rectangle. It almost looks like a rectangle. My sketch isn't great but I think it will get the job done. If I know an x value for here, this y value comes from this curve. And I know since this is a vertical line, these x values are exactly the same. But this y value comes from this particular equation. Now, one thing you should notice is that if I take the value, whatever value I put in here, say I put in a number one, negative one also has the same y value, y2 in this case, as this, because this is a horizontal line, and we're dealing with x squared. So this question is about the area of a rectangle. I need a width and I need a height. Well, the width, this is a difference of two x's, the large x minus the small x, big minus the little, which gives me a width of 2x according to this picture. Now the height, it's always the big minus the little or the top minus the bottom, y2 minus y1. y2 is 8 minus x squared. y1 is x squared minus 10. Combining like terms, I wind up getting 18 minus 2x squared. So now I'm sitting and I have a height and I have a width. I need to multiply those together. The width and the height. We're eventually going to have to take the derivative of this. So let me multiply this out. 2x times 18 is 36x. 2x times 2x squared is 4x cubed. Taking a derivative, 36 minus 12x squared. I need to find the critical values. We're going to set this equal to 0. So setting the derivative equal to 0 gives us x is equal to root 3. Now, before I continue a little bit, I actually can assume that 3 is between, sorry, x is between 0 and 3. The intersection of these two is 3 comma negative 1, so the largest x could be is 3. So this is a closed interval problem. So if you attempt to do this problem using a second derivative or first derivative test, I don't think that's a good idea. The closed interval method, I have my endpoints. And I have my critical value. Plugging 0 into my area function gets me 0. Plugging 3 into my area function 
also gets me zero. Plugging in root three into my area function doesn't give you 12. What does it give you? I want you to figure that out. So does this answer the question? I'm going to tell you that this is going to be my largest value. Let me go back to the question really quickly. Find the, find the dimensions. Ah, that's my W and the H in the problem. So I need to go back. And I need to compute W and H. So how do you compute W? How do you compute H? Well, W is equal to 2 times X. 2 times root 3. And H? H is equal to 12. So here are my dimensions for the largest rectangle that can be inscribed within the two parabolas that I gave you. I hope this was helpful. And if you need to rewind, go back, look at it again, please do so. If you have any questions, let me know.